everyone, welcome to Catch a Plant Scientist Garden. Today I'm going to tell you about these stunning daisies. These are called Shasta daisies and they look like the simple flower that probably all of us drew when we were kids. It almost looks like a simple cartoon sun with its yellow disc and white petals. The Shasta daisy is a very popular garden plant here in the UK, but did you know that it does not exist in the wild? The Shasta daisy was created by American horticulturist Luther Burbank in the late 19th century through the hybridization of three different wild daisy species from Europe and from Japan. Although this is not a native wildflower, it's still a great addition to a wildlife-friendly garden. Come closer and let's have a look at the anatomy of this flower. Let's take an up-close look at the Shasta daisy flower to find out what makes it so pollinator-friendly. A Shasta daisy is a very typical example of a flower from the Osteracea family, also called a composite flower. These flowers have a disc and a ray. The disc flowers, every one of these little kind of bumps in the center of the daisy is an individual flower containing nectar as well as pollen. That's why you will sometimes see bees and butterflies walking around the surface drinking from each of these tiny flowers. Around the edge of the plant, we have ray flowers. The ray flowers are, their function is to bear these huge petals which help attract the attention of the pollinators. Every one of these flowers can supply pollinators with lots of food, and that's why they are great for a pollinator-friendly garden. If you wish to grow more of them, simply let some of your Shasta daisies go to this sort of um, dried out state. And once all of the seeds are fully dried out, you can simply harvest more seeds by rubbing them off with your fingers. It's a good idea to deadhead them at this stage so that your garden looks a little tidier.